Hi, it's Joy and today I'm going to be watching Motherland Fort Salem Season 2 Episode 8 Delusional, which is again an ominous, ominous title. Last week's episode was intense, it was a lot, I still haven't fully processed everything Rael went through and I just really want to get watching the next episode. So a reminder that you can find the unedited version of this reaction and all of my reactions on my Patreon and let's go. You can't find Nectar without me. I want my unit by myself. Tally. It's like having the witch come along might be helpful. <laughs> There's a way to convince Alda. I mean, I'm 100% with Tally. I understand. You'll pick them up on the way. Oh. That if I was Tally, all I'd want to do is see my unit. I'm stressed. Like, I'm trying to work out if there's something up with Tally, like Nick does possess her somehow, or if it's literally just she's angry at Alda. Well, I understand you're on this mission to another bigger story there. Much bigger. I'm just stressed because Petra's going to use this for political machinations and Tally's going to be in the centre of it. I want you to impress upon Abigail and Rail how dangerous she is. Give it half a chance she will get in your heads and tear you apart from the inside. Oh, great delusional. I'll inform the strike team. You bring the man back alive. Oh, great. You're not alone in wanting the truth to come out. Thank you. Now. Everything you know about Nick to Patel. I mean, at the moment, I definitely do think Petra. Oh, I have a whole intro to talk over. Petra, I do. Oh, I just have so many thoughts right now. Petra, I think, similar to older, wants what's best. I do think Petra also kind of wants power because that's what all the Bell Brothers do. But I also do definitely think, and have said from the beginning, that older should not be the only voice in charge. And like, were Petra to come to the top, she also shouldn't be the only voice in charge. But older's been in charge for so many years that I just, I don't like her. I don't, I think she truly believes every choice she makes is the right one, but it doesn't matter what she believes. Um, and yes, I think ideally, a bit like they have the Council of the Hague, I think it would be good if there was a council of generals at the top of the army. So it was more than just one voice. Um, but I am stressed because Tally is directly in the centre of this. And I also do not blame Tally for wanting to see Rael and wanting to see Abigail, though I do hope Rael's up to it. So I think if she visibly wasn't, Tally would leave her behind, but she'd probably hide it. I don't know. Oh, I knew you killed people, sweetheart, but you did what you had to do. We're not going to see their talk? Yell if you need me. Hmm. I am right next door. <laughs> yep. I mean, Scylla needs to say to people, look, I know I did bad stuff, and I'm sorry about it. I don't blame Abigail for having that attitude, though it is, I'm glad that she didn't try and take Rail's voice away or decision away. Obviously she wouldn't, but you know. But that was all just a lie. Your mother loved you so much. It's so hard because her mother thing in her life was keeping away from you. The... She let us grieve her for uh -huh. no reason. I agree. My dad. And for what? For the spree? Rail should be able to do this screaming at her mother. She should have given me that choice. She should have given her the choice the whole time. It's so hard because her mum dying the way she did kind of forces her into forgiveness and it makes it harder for her to have this outlet for this anger plus there's no one that she gave her life for you okay yeah but it doesn't make everything okay it just makes it even more messed up in her head and i just want to give her a hug the two women i've loved most in this world were terrorists who did awful things yeah it's true what does that say about me? nothing so because you also have your sisters to be right believed my priorities have shifted sleeping anytime soon that's a good response i mean it's so true like he, he they i don't think he should carry this guilt for forever but i think the first time you take a life it should feel hard it should feel bad but i don't think my sister will see it that way hey no matter what happens we've got each other yeah Sometimes even being pacifist, you need to take a stand, and that's what you did. And did what they did to you. They're the only enemy that matters. Yeah. It would help me if you at least. <laughs> at least, but if she kind of said, "I'm sorry that I killed innocent people," I think the tone of voice she used when she described killing innocent people kind of said that. But. Oh. Oh my God! We're together. Oh, I love them so much. There are no words for my love for them. So wait, my mom told you to ignore Alder's direct orders. 
Sure did. Mm -hmm. Scylla's getting all the intel. Exactly what the army but needs more of. I think Scylla's in a good place now. Okay. I'm not happy about this. But yeah. she has a point. Seriously. Scylla needs to express her horror at what she did to those innocent people. And I don't blame Abigail for being like this because Scylla hasn't done, you know, they never liked each other and Scylla has in no way shown any of the remorse that she's shown a little bit of to Rael, to Abigail. I wonder what the other army soldiers think about their little spree companion. <laughs> oh. I just, I mean, I think we as an audience can see pretty clearly how remorseful Scylla is, but I think for the others to know it, she needs to say it some more. Okay, so this, 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 this great Nicta can get in our heads and make us delusional, and we're going in a squad of like 10. I mean, I get that, you know, they're going in their units, but I think more than just six witches and their spree friend should be going on this mission. Especially as they initially, initially just wanted Tally alone. I don't like this. Oh. Was that just bats? Oh, it's starting. This is just cruel. Oh, God. And I never stopped thinking about you. It's real, sweetheart. I know that this is like a little representation of the pain she caused him and of. How much murder she did and... Real sweetheart, she died for you. She, you know she doesn't think that. Oh, Real, she doesn't deserve this. You've used this working before. On a larger scale. Oh, great, yep. It's in the bats. Oh god. I summon the connection was very unique. Very powerful. I don't like this. But you will rejoin my pities. What? I hope that you know that your will never be forgotten. Oh god. Someone find her right now before this gets much worse. Please. You want to be me, Tally? But she doesn't. Use your sight, sweetheart. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is the reality of the stuff you've done in the past, Scylla. Think about it. Oh. She's doing the working her ancestor did, or something even greater than that, making her mum proud and destroying herself in the process. Oh. Your sisters are with you, Abigail. Oh my god, Abigail. That's her fear, yeah, so many of her fears. Like. <laughs> oh, I love them so much. Yes, you are my angel. None of that was real. I hate this so much. I love them. Oh God. Guess if anyone knows the details of that kind of working, it's a member of the spree. Yes, this is what you need to talk about and admit your remorse over, because they've not only have they experienced it firsthand now, but you've seen it with someone you care about. Tally, because you're still acting like an old lady. Look. <sighs> She's made, they're getting more irritable with each other, aren't they? This is the spree for you. They're making, there's something happening in here. There's working in here. Oh, there are bats in here. There's more working in here. Oh, and this one's affecting Scylla as well! Oh god! Yeah, it is affecting all of them. 
oh god, I'm scared because she's going alone. And Nicta had the connection with her and they're beating each other up, which stresses me as well. Nicta is getting to them. This is why you don't send six half of him a cadet to her. There's still bats everywhere. Have you seen the bats? Yes. <sighs> she is. Oh god. I love you. Finally get to hear your story. Mm -hmm. Tally is so trustworthy. You really are the sweet one. And that sight you have, it's a new shiny thing. It's a sh if you were gonna kill me. Oh yeah. Already. You can't kill me. Not unless you release my unit. You're right. Oh. <sighs> oh. Tally needs you right now. So why did she stop? Tally! Tally. Tally, this might just be Nick to playing with our heads. If she is our sister, that's a chance I'm willing to take. <sighs> She's still weak, thank God. Maybe Scylla's right. It's just Nick and Lesson. Listening to Scylla, that's a progress. Oh. Oh, my darling. I'm so proud of Tally right now. And stressed because that was brutal hand to hand fighting, unlike anything she's seen properly. And Scylla being quick to do the tying up is, impre is important, I think. <sighs> she should have moved bases while one of her people was captured. I think Rael, because she knows Scylla so well in so many ways, has been able to sense that she is remorseful for what she's done. Yeah. You're very welcome. Why don't you take Tiffany to the session? You can save my dad and have pancakes in the morning. Oh. It's a long road, but we're getting there. And I'm glad they didn't just quickly forgive Scylla, kind of held her to account for things, but also saw the evidence that she has changed in her actions and her remorse. Oh, Riel. I'm on the road to liking them together. Like, Scylla, I think we are. Stay safe. I know, I, I genuinely do love them together. And I think as an audience, we've seen that Scylla has changed from the person she was when we first met her. She does feel sick and awful about what she did. I just think she needs to continue to prove that a little bit for Riel for like a proper long-term thing and maybe, you know, express outright remorse for it. But sisters, that went down the end. Yes. Every time. We're together and mm -hmm. that's what matters. Oh, what's she doing? The founder of the spree. <sighs> Oof. Why do I feel like she's gonna execute on the spot or something? Oh. Oh my god. Why do I feel like... I've just had an idea that I think is actually crazy, but it's been bugging me, oh, like, since, like, towards the end. Has somehow Nicta, during the final fight, swapped, like, put her consciousness into Tally and Tally's consciousness into her? So that's Tally they've got captured, and this is Nicta somehow only one who's gonna pay is you. yeah oh god oh god yep i was right she's got both their faces over oh my god that's why she freaked out when tally said we're sisters i did wonder how tally managed to beat her i kind of thought it's because she was weakened oh Oh. Hello, Sarah. That was the kind of entrance I thought Nicta would make. <sighs> Fuck. 
okay I'm kind of annoyed at myself that I didn't pick up on it sooner like I kind of things didn't quite sit right the whole like with that bit but I didn't it didn't occur to me. at the beginning of the episode I was like oh no is Nick to controlling Dally somehow and then at the end of the episode I was like Dally seems a bit off but I suppose if you'd just been in a fight to your death like a fight to the death and managed to knock out someone you would be feeling that way and I kind of thought Tally potentially could have done it because we saw that Nick was visibly weakened um but obviously <laughs> Nicta is very very intelligent that's how she survived as the head of the spree um she probably should have I think actually if she'd been less rash with it if she'd stamped her feet along with the others and then asked for a private moment with Alda she probably would have got one because Alda probably would have given one to Tally and then she could have killed her much more easily than the way she tried to do it, it was actually foolish she showed her hand too early which I'm very thankful for um, it was literally only as it went on that I was like, oh crap, no, oh god. And I completely forgot about face changes. I was like, she's transferred their consciousness through a spell, but yeah. And that does explain why Nicta looked scared so much, because I was kind of like, okay, maybe she never thought she'd get captured. <laughs> and then she, I thought she was like, maybe she's scared of what Alda's gonna do to her. But obviously it was Tally and she was trying to express that it wasn't, that she wasn't herself. And then when T Tally was like, we're sister, we have each other, that's what matters. And she was like, no, oh, that was awful at the end. Um, but so much of this episode was just a lot to deal with. I'm so on a roller coaster with Scylla. Like, I do think, since like at the beginning of season one I was like I will never like this character because she killed thousands of people or at least you know a good hundred few hundred people um and like by the end of season one I was like okay yeah I can definitely understand the motivation behind why she joined the spree why she was loyal to it why she did what she did but she still killed a lot of people and I think it's sort of those scenes she had with Anacostia where she was in prison gave me hope for her and this season I think we've really seen a changed for Scylla. Now I think for me to feel fully content with her being with Rael and also for me to feel like okay with Rael taking her back for the long term I need like more instances of her doing the right thing. What I really really would like to see would be an instance of her protecting someone who wasn't a witch. Now I don't mean that I mean I don't think that she's just gonna go you know she doesn't just enjoy murder people willy and she did that's like a statement thing that the spree do but what I would like at some point is for there to be some kind of action by the spree or by somebody that is targeting civilians who are not witches and for Scylla to still step in and help because that would kind of show that she really has changed. You know, I think we know she's changed as an audience, especially because we've seen her whole journey, but to really prove that she's changed, that would be what we would need. Um, and I do wonder what it was like for her to watch someone she loved experiencing the side effects of the same working she used. Um, I mean, obviously it was a slightly tweaked version because it played on their own insecurities and then their fears and, you know, kind of what was most pressing in their brains at that moment. Um, but she, you know, saw Rael trying to slit her own throat and like, okay, yeah, she doesn't care about Tally and Adriel in the same way, but to kind of see the destructive way that that power could be used and having it used against witches and having it used against Rael might add to her guilt, which, you know, I'm not saying she needs to walk around like atoning every day of like, you know, being, being like a self flagellant or whatever they used to do in medieval times or anything ridiculous like that, but I just need like concrete proof to us that she has changed and that she the main issue is that she feels remorse for what she did and that if today um someone were to say to her okay yeah we can go and kill the Camarilla but first you have to kill 500 innocent people her response would be no way I'm not doing that that's what I kind of want to see with Scylla to fully gauge the journey where she's at in her journey but I did enjoy her scenes with Rael I think it's hard because the last time they saw each other was in that prison cell it was she thought she was dead they've had a lot together and I think it doesn't just immediate you don't just immediately go from fearing from being in love with someone to despising and hating them I think their connection was still there and Rael had always wanted to believe there was more to it and so kind of seeing her with her mother and realizing that they saved her and then hearing that they were going up against Camarilla which makes sense because they were there I do think those are all points in the favour. I don't know if Rael knows the exact nature of her. I guess they, they do because they, they called her murderer or whatever in the argument. Um, but Scylla is murderer. Scylla does have a lot of innocent blood on her hands and needs to come to terms with that and atone with that. And I think she is doing that. Um, but it was, I liked that Rael, you know, she didn't just scream at her and kick her out but she didn't just let her go off the hook either. She really did hold her to account for what she'd done and the crime she'd committed. 
to an extent, but she also remembered that she was the girl she loved and that she did to save her life. And I do wonder how different that conversation would have been had they been reunited and she hadn't just found out her mum had been alive the whole time and died for her. You know, I think she might have been a little bit angrier at Scylla or somewhere, but I think Riel had just been tortured and murdered multiple times to then find her mother again, to find out her mother has been alive and lying to her this entire time, then die, then find Scylla again. You know, I think the timing of their reunion worked for Scylla in a way because Riel had a lot of other stuff going on as well. Um, so for Riel, I think in a lot of ways, in terms of with Scylla, she's in a much better place now than she has been because, okay, yeah, she's kind of got her dad to harbour a fugitive, although I don't know if the session has the same laws as the rest of the country, so maybe she would be safe there. Um, but she is sending Scylla and little Tiffany to be with her dad, to be somewhere where he, he, they can be safe. I do wonder if they'll mention that his wife was alive this whole time. Maybe Rael should do that. Um, but they're going there to be safe. And she's seen that Scylla, she's seen Scylla do good. She's seen that Scylla was the first one to go and restrain Nictor. I don't know whether Scylla tweaked and maybe she was like, hey, they're gonna get older, I'm still a spree. I, I don't think that really. And she kind of saw that she was part of the team. And that even at the end when Abigail, cause she never really had a great problem with Tally beyond like, soldier and spree. It was Abigail and Scylla that really didn't like each other all throughout season one, but even before they found out that they, that um, she was spree. But when at the end Abigail, you know, said, oh yeah, thank you, we can like, do without you. She just accepted the apology. I think that does show growth as well. But for Riel, she's got to say a lot of the stuff to Scylla. She's got to see proof that she wasn't a crazy person falling in love with a sadistic murderer. She's seen proof that Scylla isn't a psychopath because you would kind of if you found out that someone you were in love with had killed was like a terrorist you would think oh my god they were just using me and I think she's seen proof that that wasn't the case and that she feels remorse I think some of the way she referred to the acts she'd committed like the tone of her voice showed remorse like I said I'd like a little bit more just to get like the confirmation but um I think she was able to see that Scylla is becoming a better person to realize that her mom actually had a little bit of a hand in that um I don't think her mom recruited Scylla. I did initially just because she was on the center on the mission but I think that was somebody different potentially and at the end of the day Scylla was a vulnerable girl who was uh, brainwashed, um, sucked into this terrorist organization because she'd been hurt um, by the army and by Alder's decision to execute her parents for being dodgers and she turned that pain on others and maybe it felt good right then but the further she comes away from it the more she realizes that she just became the thing she hated. She just caused that pain tenfold, ten thousandfold. Um, so I'm really glad that we are seeing that evolution for Scylla. And like I keep, I'm going around, I just feel like I'm repeating myself, I'm very sorry. <laughs> but she, we've really got to see for Rael's sake, she can kind of have that moment with Scylla to talk to her, to be cross with her, but also to accept that they do have a connection, it does matter, and that Scylla is a better person, that she wasn't wrong to fall in love because she fell in love with the good parts, the parts that Scylla was showing her, and the parts of Scylla that are in there now. And, in a way, it's almost like the fact that she, Rael was the one that helped show her a different way because she didn't take Rael to the spree. That was a decision she did make even before she knew she'd been turned in. Um, I think that's basically, I think Rael's gonna be in a much healthier place in terms of Scylla right now. And I feel like they could, in the future, I would be much happier with them getting together than I was at the end of season one. Um, in terms of her mother, Rael has not even begun to process that, but she did immediately get thrown on a mission, so of course not. Um, I don't know how you would get over a parent lying to you about being alive so they could become a terrorist. I, I really don't. I mean, we don't know exactly what Willa has done, but we do know that when this, the stadium attack was planned, it was planned as a mass suicide event. It was not planned as a warning about the Camarilla. So, obviously, when the Camarilla attacked them and she knew the Camarilla were back, um, Willa changed the plan, but up until that point, she was going to murder all those people, which suggests she probably had ordered or done things before, but she just was, unlike Nicta, she wasn't blindsided. I think she truly joined the spree and left her family because she thought it was the right thing for which kind, for witches, she was doing the right thing. Now, I don't know how anyone could ever think leaving their kid in that kind of circumstance was doing the right thing, but okay. Especially not living in the session, like, if Scylla can just pop to the session, surely she could have just popped to the session, I, I don't know. Um, but for Rael's sake, she knows her mother has probably been party to some pretty terrible things, especially if she ordered Scylla to come and get Rael, but suggests she's fairly high up in the spree. Um, and then I don't know how you would deal with the anger of that parent lying to you for all those years, putting you through the grief that you know you went through and that you saw your other parent that you love, who's done nothing wrong, going through as well. And that is coupled with the fact that 
you can't, when that person is dead and they died for you, you can't properly be angry at them because you're grieving them all over again and you're like, oh, she did just die for me, but I'm really mad at her. And like, I just think that I just, I'm so glad she had that final conversation with her mum, but it's just such a horrible place to be in. And I think it will affect Rael for a very long time. And I do sort of think she might be pushing it down because there's other stuff going on, but it, it's very stressful. Um, and I just want to go with a big hug ever. I'm so glad they had the hug at the beginning and at the end they would kind of hug each other. Then, okay, Abigail. Again, this episode wasn't super focused on Abigail, um, but I think something they've done well in season, and probably in season one too, is obviously they have three central characters and then the other characters' plots going on as well. And often in an episode, two of the main characters will be that little bit more focused, but the third one is always relevant and growing and part of the story which is really good and um, for Abigail her dream vision was trying to be the best bellwether trying to be the same as the original bellwether or at least the great bellwether and not being able to do it it not being able to control it it killing her family all people she wanted to make proud it's kind of speaking to her fear of not being enough her fear of not being good enough of not of not only not being able to make her family proud but that she's just going to destroy everyone around her and maybe even the fact that they all died was kind of a bit of the like, she's the last bellwether and if she doesn't have kids, which of course, I don't think she should have to. It's not like, I don't know, but kind of that sense of it's, I'm the last, I've killed them all if I don't do anything. And, but also, I think she needs to remember that the fact that she can even almost do what the other bellwether did shows how powerful she is. And she's at the beginning of her training. And I actually think, Ab I mean, of her witchhood, she's like 19. Abigail is actually, I think, held back by the name Bellwether in a lot of ways because she puts added pressure on herself. It's like anytime she does something, she still has that mindset of it must immediately be perfect because I'm a Bellwether. Whereas she doesn't give herself that time to experiment and grow and get better, which, I mean, she is amazing. She's so powerful as it is. But, you know, I do think she will find her stride. She will find the thing that she particularly excels at in the same way that Tally has and Rael has kind of stumbled into. But yeah, they did say a lot of harsh truths to each other, well, of harsh things that, I think the sort of things they were shouting at each other in the cabin were the things you think in your worst moments when you're the most, when you're just really, like when Abigail would be feeling really upset that she didn't have the mushroom, she'd be thinking, oh god, Ray doesn't even deserve it, I'm sorry for it, it's all she's got, I'm bell with it. And then her brain a bit later would be like, oh god, that was such an awful thing to think. I really like Rael's not like that and for similar same with Rael sort of saying oh you're just a womb she would think oh god why would I say that I know how awful that position is like it's the sort of thing that in your weakest worst moments you think but sisters can fight but as Rael said their love is enduring their love is always there and that's what matters um which I did love a moment even if it wasn't Tali so it was stupid Nicta ruining my lovely moment um but I think Adil is poised in a very interesting place right now and like pacifism is difficult because obviously if you're a pacifist and you just say i will never ever do anything remotely resembling violence then you will just be destroyed by the bigger forces in the world i don't think fighting for your safety i don't think defending yourself which kind of attacking the camarilla was defending themselves in a way because those people just attacked them again it wasn't like they went to their homes where they had like innocent children and killed them or anything you know it was purely defense and they saved some little girls and Rael, who that was, you know, was there i think he kind of hopefully will be able to come to terms with the place where he might never want to join a strike team you know he might never want to or he might not want to become like a soldier but that it's okay to fight sometimes to protect yourself and your family and Kalida does need to understand that traditions traditions are important and you shouldn't f lose them like the um, remaining oh my goodness my I've, I've forgotten the name of their people Turim right? Because I was thinking Turin, but that's a, a city. And um, the remaining Turin shouldn't, like, form a standing army or anything. I think there are enough of them for that. But they should still remember that they are pacifists, but they should not be afraid to stand up for themselves. And, like, by all means, don't teach Alder all of your secret workings, because, yeah, we don't trust her. But using them yourself to defend your people, to make the world safer for them, I think you should be something she should consider. I do think there may be a bit of a rift between them, but it's one that Kalida has seen coming. You know, she said at the beginning of the season to um, Riel that she was worried about him, that she was worried that he was losing his way and getting new ideas that weren't who he was. And I do think Kalida is very much, we do things our way or else. So I do worry for his sake that he might struggle with that and Kalida might struggle with that. I think it's important that he has Abigail that, you know, 
even if he were to lose everything, he would still have her and her, like, I mean, maybe not her family, they'd probably be a bit resistant, but, I mean, I'm sorry as well, Bellwethers, yes, he's not from a noble line or whatever you talk about, but he's from the Turim. He has epic magic that you've never seen before. He is a male witch with epic magic. I would want that in my bloodline right away. <laughs> and they'd make really attractive, well, really cute babies that would grow into very attractive people, let's face it. <laughs> So I think, in a way, it will kind of feel like he's being pulled between the world he came from and his family and Abigail's world. And it's bigger than that, it's so much bigger than that, there's so much more going on than that. Even if he'd never met Abigail, he'd still be being pulled between the two because when you keep being beaten, it's hard to not fight back. Um, but yes, I'm stressed for Adil. Petra is making moves. She's been doing it subtly, I think, since season one. I mean, she tried to do a coup in season one a bit, didn't she? And that's what got them initially kicked out of War College. Well, not put through to War College. Um, she's very much making her subtle moves. And the interesting thing, I think, is that Petra was able to not just tell Tally it was a capture mission, but tell the strike team, tell everybody else that it was a strike team, that it was a capture mission, and it didn't get back to Alder. That those people all either unquestionably believe that she had true orders from Alder, which I suppose maybe is true, but I think a lot of people, because it's not just going to be our unit that have noticed Alder is not everything she's cred up to be. Like, yes, there are some exceptional circumstances when it comes to our unit because of the situations they've been in, you know, Tally sensing there were hostages in that truck and then Alder saying, oh, the spree had already executed them and that kind of thing. You know, the, our unit have, through circumstance and through being the main characters, they have just happened to get more intel on Alder, but I think pretty much a lot of people like Anna Costa, anyone who spends time in Alder's proximity or really is able to study her actions and the truth behind them and all that kind of thing would be wary of her because she is not the great wonderful saint to witches that she tries to be um, or to present herself as. I feel like there probably would be some people that would be ripe to agree to overthrow her or to ask her to retire now. Um, I do wonder what Petra's ultimate goal is, if it is just to become older herself. I thought it was interesting that in the vision, Tally, like, the vision was like, oh, you've always wanted to be me. And I think, sure, maybe Tally would like to be the head of the army one day, but I think Tally joined the army because she, she had the dispensation, she could have not done it, but she couldn't keep watching the news, seeing the spree murdering innocent people and not do her part to try and stop it, which... In some ways it's naive, sure, but that is such a noble thing. That is like the kind of, the good reason people join the military in the real world. You know, some people join the military because they think it's going to give them power and they get to shoot a gun, but you know, the good people that join it do it because they truly want to make a difference. And over the course of season one, most especially in the incident with the hostages, we saw Tally realise that just because the army is technically fighting the bad guys doesn't mean they're always the good guys. And she learnt like a lot of harsh truths about what it means to be in the army. So I could definitely see Tally sort of thinking, God, if I was in charge, I'd do it better. But I also don't think that she in any way has that kind of goal. What I honestly think, as I will say, I think I've said since the first season, we need a council of witches, like the Council of the Hague, to be the generals, to be the ones making the decisions. Um, so Petra is playing a dangerous game because, yet again, she's showing her cards to Alder, but also if Alder were to kick her out or to try and, you know, get her dishonorably discharged, it would be a huge blow. Right now they need to present a united front. Right now they need to seem like everything's cool because they have multiple enemies and the people getting up against them. It's stressful. So tally this episode. Um, it's stressful in general. Um, I do think it shows a lot of courage in the way she does continually stand up to Alder. She is playing with fire, that is for sure, but it does show that she's got a lot of courage and Alder definitely has got a special interest in her because she, you know, was, I think they said in the After the Storm, the first person ever to offer to be a biddy in battle, to kind of, it was very rare at least for someone in the middle of battle who had not been preparing for it to offer to give up their life for her. Also, the fact that she has this extra sight is the reason that she had shared the memories. No other biddy has ever seen all those memories or thoughts. They seem to sense her emotions because they hiss when she's mad and stuff, but um, Tally was, is special. And like Nictor even said, your sight is something, there's something new. It's, um, she's interested, like anything new, in the same way that she can use Rael's witch warmness as a weapon, Tally is a, a, a tool she can use as well. But obviously, if she gets too outspoken, I don't think Alder's going to like that very much. So it is very dangerous. Um, 
And I think being someone that is Alda's favourite, being someone Alda is close to, is dangerous because you learn the truth. You get more than anyone else. Anyone other than the biddies, you see just how awful she is. And the minute you try and speak out on it or the minute you do something she doesn't like, she can turn you into the enemy. I would be very intrigued to find out exactly how the spree were formed. I mean, we know the basics, but did Alda just kick her out of the army? Or did she, after being so horrified by what Alda did, just make the spree by herself? But regardless, kind of, she was Alda's favourite too. Um, I think she can kind of see a lot of herself in Tally, in the sort of being naive or believing in the best in people and believing the best in the army and trying to do good, but it can end up being used for bad. So Tally that scares me a lot obviously but I'm also very proud of her and I love her um I think it's really interesting about their characters that I don't assume Nick was doing anything different in the working I truly do think it probably was just kind of Tally's nature isn't overly to fight and to hurl insults you know like it's more to be like oh you idiots fine kill each other like I care <laughs> you know I think that's really interesting kind of showing the differences in their personalities and there's nothing wrong with those differences I mean obviously nothing that Nick did there was good the fight between them, I truly did think for a minute that Tally might have won, but only because Nicta was so visibly weakened. Um, Tally is smart and she was able to, like she said, she was able to sense that, oh, you would have killed me by now, but you can't kill me. And even in way her saying that and getting Nicta to do it, she saved her sisters from the fighting and everything that was going there. And then she just needed to try and hold her own in the fight until the others came. Um, I wonder at what point Nicta swapped them around because Obviously they heard a scream that they thought was Tally's and then they tried to find her and then they heard a scream that they thought wasn't Tally's. So did she change their faces quite early on in the fight? Um, I'm just, I'm very stressed about that. But for Tally then to not only, I mean, she would have thought she was going to die in that moment because she is one-on-one -on -one up against the leader of the spree, a witch who not only has years of experience on her, but is the leader of the spree who has survived this long. Um, any of them would have been lucky to beat her one-on-one. -on -one. Like I said, I thought I did initially think she had beaten her one on one, but only like I said because she was Nicta was so weak. Um, but then for Tally to kind of imagine that like you've been m witch muzzled, you've lost your kind of what happens if as I arrive, like I was thinking, it's all just gonna be like for your crimes, you will be sentenced to death <laughs> and just like kill her. Like anything could have happened. And what if Nicta? What could Nicta do? Nicta could do something that killed Doriel or Abigail, part of me thought she was gonna like, at some point when they were on that helicopter, thought it was gonna crash or something. I mean, obviously she wanted to get to Alder, so that makes less sense, but you know, there was sort of, she would've just been so scared thinking about what was gonna happen. She's gone from thinking she was really gonna die in the fight, thinking, oh no, what's gonna happen? What is, what is Alder, what is Nicta gonna do? Is it gonna affect me? Is it gonna affect my sisters? Um, and I don't think Tally was Alder dead, even if she doesn't want her to account. So yeah, that, that was just very horrific. Um, and it must hurt having, because I don't feel like when, having kind of your voice suppressed in that way I've just this episode was a lot yeah again um slightly less physical torture a lot of emotional mental torture there are two episodes left and that makes me so sad I want more do we have any information on a third season I hope we do but yeah this show is everything I adore my girls Scylla it's not quite one of my girls but you know she's getting back well she never really was because we pretty much immediately found out she was free. She's building her way into my good graces bit by bit. I like that she really is committed to being there for Tiffany. Um, she takes that seriously. And I do think we should have a choice and shouldn't just be conscripted. But anyway, thank you so much for watching this reaction. If you watched it to this point, a reminder that you can find the unedited version of this reaction on my Patreon. And thank you so much for watching.